what's come out of this is we learned some new skills. Um, and we've been doing this for quite some time, but it's really only been in the last four or five years that we've started to look at precisely what those skills are. Um, the first one is being able to pull information from a model. Now, we use a piece of software called COSX. Um, um, but there's a more important thing to it that it's called a map. And the map is the thing that tells everybody what a quantity is. So it will, it will uh, uh, map from the families and the objects within the model to an estimate. And that map has a value to anybody. So in the past, me as a quantity surveyor, I had a best, uh, you know, uh, I, I could only advise a client. I couldn't advise a subcontractor as well. But if you think about the number of times that someone asked that same question of what's the quantity of carpet through the life of a project, it's that same map that will drive it for everybody. Um, so what's come out of this is a map is actually separate from an estimate and it's something that can be shared and different people can use it. To give you an idea of how Costex works, um, it's just a short demo, um, but this is out of the box, it, it won't do anything. Um, this, what makes this work is our model maps and our templates and also our, our pricing data. Um, but there's sort of three phases to it. This is, this is the initial phase where you're just looking at the model, um, so it's almost like a viewer. Um, and it works like any of the authoring tools. Um, we can see the properties at that point in point in time, but we actually haven't imported in any quantities. Um, we can isolate areas, and then the next phase is, is we start to import it, and you'll see quantity information come in in here. And it'll come in by element, or sometimes what's referred to as QSID. The reason that it'll come in in this sort of form is because we've mapped it to come in that way. So there's no coding driving this, it's actually a map that's driving it. We can see that those precast panels are 2,186 square metres. We can see where they are. So we can start to verify our measurement in that way. In terms of time, this is double speed. Um, and then the next phase is, is we're bringing in our estimate template, which is then referring to another database, which is our rate book. And again, this is mapped through. And you'll see that the precast panels go precisely to where they need to go in that estimate. So we've generated an estimate of $8 million in around about, if this was real time. When this was done, it used to take about three minutes. And today it takes about 45 seconds. Um, so this is the shift, is this ability to be able to recost something over and over and over. Um, and all we do is revision, basically. So we set up a map, you bring in a model, and then you make that map more detailed as the level of development of the model progresses. So that's one skill. The next one is pushing information and round tripping. Um, so me operating as a QS in my own right, I don't need to push any information back into the model to make it work if my, if my map is robust. But if I want someone else to be able to see the same information as I want, then I need to be able to place codes in that area that will, that will make that work. We use BIMLink, which is gold. <laughs> um, and basically what we do is we pull the information into Costex, we attach a whole pile of codes on the side of it, of the ones that we want for that project, we export them out and then push them back into the model, into the instance parameters. Um, the types of things that are valuable are trade package codes, work breakdown structures, activity codes, perhaps costing codes for that project. Um, but trade package codes themselves are, are extremely valuable. And I think that's something that is difficult to put in at an early time. What's important about putting information within a model is to put it there at the right time. If you put it there too early, then you've got to maintain it, and it becomes a bit of a nightmare. Um, so it's about the right time. The other skill that we've developed is validating models and a thing called a workaround, which we all know from Revit, but it also happens in quantity surveying. What we're looking at here is a model that we're working on recently, um, um, and we use Celebri to validate the model. So we're working with IFCs, um, and this is a Revit structural model. And basically we use Celebri because it, it works well for us in its search set sets for identifying what's not there. So we're not so interested in clash, we're interested in where it doesn't clash. And the reason for that is if it clashes, the quantity's probably right, but if it misses, there might be something extra that's needed. So what we do is, um, the bane of our life is re-measurement. 
So one approach we could take is this model's ratchet. I can't rely on that. I'm going to measure it by hand. The problem with that is the next time it comes into my office, I'll have to measure it by hand. So what we do is we rely on the model um, for the quantity. That is actually sitting there in our, in our estimate sheet. And then we make an adjustment for the additional concrete if that's what's needed to go into that gap. We give that workaround a number. We're able to search all of our database to find our workarounds. And we send a note to the engineer and say, hey, what's going on here? Is there more concrete to go in or have you just got the offset wrong? Um, in this instance, the offset was wrong. So once it's repaired in the model, then we delete the workaround. Um, that way, it, it will then uh, update again next time. And this is a skill, is, is identifying um, how to map and, and where to continue to do it. The other area is in negotiations and price transparency. So when you're using models to visualise quantities um, and you're in a negotiation, the other side gives up. <laughs> um, in, in, my, in the past, I've had, you could put five QSs in a room uh, and, and they would all come up with a different quantity and they would all explain why their dimensions are better than the other ones. But when you start presenting information like this, people can't be bothered. Um, that takes us around about two or three minutes to do. This is one quarter of the structural model on $1.8 million dollar, uh, $1.8 billion dollar hospital. Um, in the past, uh, if the yellow is revised, if I saw a set of drawings that had that many revisions on it, <laughs> you know, we just leave. It, this, this, is, this is not an issue here. Um, so it, it's this new skill that's come about. It's this ability to be able to revision things, use that as a way to negotiate, create transparency because you can identify every change. <coughs> 